coming up on this episode. Puppies look adequately small enough so to get out of this dog. 39? You don't see the full skeleton, but you can see the ribs, so we can't tell how many are in there. And just tell her whatever they can to get her to poop, some natural something, but this has got to get out. This one's oh, beautiful. he's adorable. How this old is, is the he? One, this is the one that I they said will never it. walk again. Can he and, walk? Oh my God. Let me see him. He just walk, he runs. Look at him. Oh, they were going to put him down? Yes. For a head tilt? Yeah, no, remember he came in, he couldn't walk, he couldn't sit up. He said we oh. couldn't handle or take care of. Aw. And look at him. Hi, kitty. It's okay. I actually really enjoy working here. It's a little hectic, but it's well worth it. Uh, we see a lot of really bad cases here. I worked at other like nicer AHA animal hospitals, and I've never seen like one percent of the cases that we see here. And here, you really feel like you're giving back to the community, helping out a lot of owners and pets. We feel like we make a difference here, definitely. Uh, we're reviewing our PM treatments. These are our patients like in the upper respiratory ward, so they're in a totally different isolated area so they don't contaminate any of our other pets. So we just have to make sure that everyone gets their daily treatment. It's typically twice a day. Make sure that they're on IV fluids, um, injectable medication, and then we slowly start introducing food back into their system because they're usually not feeling too well, not too hungry. 500 milligrams, one tab, P-O-B-I-D, for four days. What you doing now, just trying to wake him up? Yeah, he's nice and asleep right now on cloud nine. They're usually pretty comfy right now, and then we have them on a heating pad, so they don't want to wake up too, too quickly sometimes. So you try to wake them up? Yeah, the just a nice, you know, there we go, hi. So I typically start to have like a swallowing reflex first. And they're kind of like, oh, hey, where are we? And usually this way they don't wake up too violently, too in shock. It's a nice transition. Hi. Hi. What happened? What happened this dog? Uh, looks like he was attacked by another dog. Luckily, they were able to get him away. Looks like it was just a little snag on his um, bottom lip. We just, it looks like he got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches later. We're okay. Yeah, you're okay. Is that what's, yes. what's going on with her ear? Uh -huh. There's a chunk missing. It's it was scabbed. It's from flies. Yes. So we cleaned it up. But you know, have you ever seen a really bad case of fly strikes? Oh, I've seen worse. Where like most of the ear just is gone from the flies that enjoy the ears. This is an outdoor dog. This dog lived outside. So the antibiotics we gave you is going to take care of the ears. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then what are you giving me for her arthritis? They gave her a shot, and they're giving, they should be giving you Rimadyl. Did they give you Rimadyl? I don't know. Oh, they're going to give you medicine. You're going to have three different antibiotics and a uh, something for the, the hips. Okay, and they gave her some dexamethasone, okay. you know, which is an anti-inflammatory. It's long-lasting. Okay. Thanks. I thought your meds should be here. See, nobody told us that you were coming or they would have had your meds ready today. No, I told them yesterday that I was coming. Well, then kill them right there. Who'd you tell? Did you tell my girls or did you tell Robin? Yeah, one of your girls. Nancy, they're saying they told you guys yesterday that they were coming to pick up Alexis so we could have had the meds ready for them. What, yesterday? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I told them in the back. Okay, so now I have to go kill somebody in the back. Give me one second. We look like, this is why I end up looking like shit. Because they told Nancy yesterday, they're fine with yours, that they're picking up the dog today. So why isn't the red medi medication ready for her? What are you talking what about? They're ready. They've been ready. Since when? They're up there already. Okay, so where is, please tell me you gave her something for the pain for the hips. Please tell me. Joy, 
Please tell me we sent him home with some carpet. I don't know what you're talking about. Black Sea. Which one is that? It's a banana. I'm so, I have to order Rimadale. Thanks to you, I don't even know if I'm gonna get Thanks into that. Yes, how do you not tell me? Seriously, I mean, I mean seriously. That's what you're supposed to be doing is telling me what, on my list, there's nowhere on my list does it say Beitro, nowhere. Yes? Uh, unless you guys just added it today, I'm sure. Uh, Serenia, I just got you guys a case. How could you add that? Okay, um... I saw the one cc, but not three cc. No, I got three cc with, with needle. Okay. Didn't I order a case of three cc from you? Thank you, I am. Uh-huh, I'm on it. She said I'm always on top of things. Bam! In your face! Top of things. Bam! In your face! At least I'm not bent over like you are. Anyway... <laughs>
puppies look adequately small enough so to get out of this dog. 39? 3940, okay, because you don't see the full skeleton, but you could see the ribs, so we can't tell how many are in there. And just tell her whatever they can to get her to poop, some natural something, but this has got to get out. Here you go. Okay, all right, thank you. So they x-rayed her and they decided she has probably five puppies inside. And so we're happy. We think that she'll be able to deliver naturally. they're saying I'm slow in the rooms and um, I'm really not that slow in the rooms but right now because of all the things going around okay. around it's slowing things down but everybody's getting mad at me and they I'm the only one they'll get mad at it does make me mad when they say that I am too slow in the room it really makes me mad because I'm very thorough I'm very thorough and um, to say that I'm slow makes me mad I mean I have some things that you can say I'm slow but I don't want to make a mistake and and diagnose the wrong thing because I'm trying to rush a client but I'm not that angry at them because I'm not gonna let them ruin my day Spe especially people like Cindy because it's rude it's very rude it's simple as that so I'm like OCD about my staff and I have cameras everywhere I even have cameras where I can watch from my house every square inch of the hospital I can watch from my cell phone. I can watch everywhere. So, because, not because I think they're gonna steal, which is kinda stupid, they will steal, but because I'm afraid that somehow, like, an animal might get hurt, an animal might get out, or somebody's not taking care of my animals very well. So I have cameras everywhere, and I have a command center right here. There you go. I'm always like, right now, I just saw Martin drinking a soda in my x-ray room, so I'm gonna go kill him. So I think everybody here is either fighting or fucking. So Alma and Beverly are having kind of a love-hate relationship right now, all the time, because I've known Alma longer and Beverly kind of likes to run the thing. They both are trying to be, it's kind of funny, trying to be me in a sense. Like, um, I, I, I'll trade places with them any day of the week. They can take my job. Alma have a crush. Of course she has a crush on me. She doesn't, she's not might have a crush on me. Alma has a monster crush on me. I mean, if you watch, she's always grabbing my ass. She's, I mean, I keep telling her, look, dude, I'm just like, not gay. Not that there's anything wrong with it, but come on. So yeah, I love Puck. Um, Puck is really, he's come a long way in spite of the way he looks to a lot of people, you know? Um, he, he came in, he couldn't even move, he was on his side and he couldn't lift his head and he couldn't do anything and a rescue said they were going to come back for him. The problem with those kind of surgeries is if you don't do them right away, they're permanent. And even though the nerves regenerate for like two years, um, I mean he couldn't lift his head or anything. He's one of my personal favorites and if he, if he didn't weigh so much I would take him home. But I have some mean little ankle biters at home that would just torture him. So uh, he's now strong enough to get into a wheelchair. He now sits up and I love him and he loves me when I walk in. He just lights up and screams for me to come and get him. So I go and get him and I hold him. And uh, I'm hoping once he, get in, once he gets into a wheelchair, he'll be able to run around the hospital like the others. Good luck. <laughs> He's so, oh, he no. tried to, yeah. Humping the husky. Three, three days. That was three days ago. Yeah, he was good, <laughs> that's why. I, yeah, I you got a lot of life left in you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, look, I, I can't promise you too much. I'm gonna do everything we can, okay? That's all I can do, we'll try. So in that room, they wanted to put the dog to sleep, so we're gonna donate the surgery so that they won't put the dog to sleep. We don't know how the outcome is. We don't know if it's going to make it even from the surgery, but I would rather the dog die on the surgery table while we're trying to save it than just give up and she just put it to sleep. 
so it's a mass tumor they can't afford it so we'll give it a shot and if it works then i'm gonna be so happy and then i'm gonna yell at her okay and then if it doesn't work she'll probably yell at me thank you don't make me cry don't make me cry because I cry too much here already, so I don't want to, because, besides, I don't want you to be sad. We're gonna try, okay? So think positive, we're gonna do it tomorrow. dogs from different shelter systems all the way from Lancaster California to San Bernardino County and a lot of the time we bring them to pet care center there's not a lot of places that treat parvo dogs recently we picked up our latest set of parvo puppies and the mother they all tested positive for parvo as well as pneumonia we had eight puppies two died in the shelter we had six remaining we brought the puppies here, they were all on IV, and one by one they unfortunately continued to pass because their poor little bodies, they were two and three weeks old, and they just continued to pass. They couldn't sustain themselves. We have one lone survivor, so that's who I'm here to pick up today. Come here, handsome. Oh, I don't know, I haven't seen you. Pet Care Center. They do a lot of rescue work with the rescue community and they give us our discounts and they make what we do possible to continue what we do. This little man, we have a foster for him and um, as soon as he's big enough and healthy enough and he's gotten all of his vaccinations, then we'll find him a perfect home but we don't adopt out until after they've been spayed, neutered, and vaccinated. Oh, baby. Why do people tell me, make it cheap, I have five cats. <laughs> you know what? I'm not trying to be rude, but you're in the hood. But why would you have five cats? Why would you have five cats and it's just like, like me taking care of your kids? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you shouldn't have five kids. If you can't take care of them, right? You have one and you shouldn't have any. Did you think I was listening? You are. Okay, stop pushing my buttons out. Here in South Central Los Angeles, um, it can be a little bit more stressful because you do have people who um, really good pet, pet care is sort of under the wire with them. Some things they think is good is not good. So it, there can be a lot more stress here with that. I don't want to insult anybody. I see my clients ever. They might not see this. They're not going to see it. They're not moving to me. No, they can they can to me. If they can travel there, they can pay their bills. Oh, wait. I have a client. Beautiful, blondish, black Jesus. All right? You know white Jesus, the common picture of white Jesus? He looked like, but he was very light and blonde. He was gorgeous, but he was a horrible person. And he was just who he had a puppy with a on. And I wanted him to treat the puppy. And he's like, oh, it's going to die anyway. And he, he was so threatening. And he made me so nervous that after I finished with him, I went into the bathroom and I cried. And I said, I can't, I can't let this happen. I can't let people intimidate me like this. So one day I went to a restaurant that was closer to my house. And this guy was there. So I went and sat right next to him. I said, you got another puppy. What happened to it? And he said, it died. And he was being polite. So I said, well, maybe you should vaccinate him because your dog will get karma. And it's like it popped a bubble of fear and it just popped. And so now I'm like, you know, I don't care anymore. Although we do get it. Some people that come in here, like the lady that Alex is fighting and lobbying with, we get some people that it hits the border of, you know, I'm going to be okay and now I'm intimidating you and now I'm ready for a fight. It's not everybody, but it's, you know. It's, I, I guess it, it's somewhat solved because Yes, the person wanted their dog, but they didn't want to pay. 
and and the whole behavior pattern of the person suggests that at some point they're not going to take care of the dog it's, it's property they want their property back it's not like they want their sweet little pet back no mine open it no mine This is all I have for lunch. And you're gonna have, no, a little scoop. You have all that salad. Do you realize there is nothing that I eat that you don't have to eat? No, I have to try some of it. I wanna make sure you're okay. Oh, it's because you love me. I love you. And I wanna make sure they didn't poison you. Okay, okay. And I'm only gonna get just a big scoop. You just said a little now, it's a big <laughs> scoop. You're such a bitch. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You guys heard her say one scoop. Mm. Oh yeah, I am a doctor. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's because you're a doctor. You get to have a scoop, two scoops. Mm -hmm. You hear what happened with the other doctor? I, I was saying, I was saying, give this to the doctor. Mm -hmm. I said, give this to the other doctor, and she goes, well, what am I? Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, their doctor implies you're a doctor. Why do you doctors so pathetic? Because we get so sensitive. Insecure. Because we have a problem. What do you want? Mm -hmm. What do you want from me? Mm -hmm. I mean, we are smart. Mm -hmm.